this tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi friends, we're in summer 2019, SIGGRAPH in Los Angeles has just finished and Bifrost extension has been released. I was a bit confused about Bifrost, I thought that was an update but it's an extension and that's how we should think about it. These are the, oh, well, not very well documented documentations of this new extension which is basically a new paradigm, there's a new, new way to think about Bifrost, namely in terms of nodes which are connected, logical operators, logic op operators so to say. We are in Maya and uh, it's my 2019.2 and we have here the effects, the special effects. And Bifrost fluids, I did many tutorials about Bifrost fluids. You have pretty simple clicks here, liquid arrow get example but basically liquid and arrow are the starting points and when you for example create a sphere and go to bifrost and then arrow you get some um, steam rising up and the same with water you can select the same sphere here and watch what's happening in the outliner we've already we have uh, lots of nodes there which weren't there before now we create a liquid from, from that. We have lots of nodes here and the new extension doesn't have to do anything with it. And uh, what I really find confusing is, is the water coming down now. Let's display the voxels here instead of the particles. So you see the water <laughs> dropping, dripping down and the, st the steam rising here. Sorry for that, I'm, I'm getting a little bit carried away. Uh, let's move this up and create a collider. And now this should look like this. Water drops down and splashes on that plane. Really great and really simple. So the new uh, way of dealing with Bifrost doesn't have to do anything with this and for that purpose we create a new scene and we're under FX doesn't matter really in this case go to Windows and here we find Bifrost browser and Bifrost graph editor if you don't have these things watch a tutorial I did just last week it has to do with the plugin which are right here the plugin manager anyway we have a Bifrost browser and uh, in the a couple of YouTube tut tutorials tell us more about it and uh, they basically say do some reverse engineering and that's what I'm trying to do now I go to volumes here and I double click the procedural cloud procedural means it doesn't is not based on a photograph that means it's a mathematically lightweight that means it's ideal for good performance now um, we have several nodes here and this is uh, what basically the graph editor in the Bifrost extension is about. Here we create a mesh sphere and uh, it is connected to a base mesh cloud volume here. And the cloud volume goes into an assigned material node which uh, gets the geometry, gets a volume material from an AI standard volume, Arnold that is, and with all that information, the shading, and the volume here it goes out into the out geometry that's how we are able to see it these are just um, things we don't need really and this is not necessary uh, either so we have just a pretty simple thing we input a geometry we create a volume out of it we shade that volume and we put it out now let's minimize this and why, why don't we see anything? If we saw geometry we could now type the letter A to see all but we see parts of the grid center. The trick is to move out here and now we see the cloud. 
this is uh, strange as well because it works in all parts of Maya really the key A to see all but not in the Bifrost extension so this is the cloud they offer us and um, it renders okay you need a light in order to render it and you have a very clean layout here in the outliner only this node here if you double click it you're back to the Bifrost graph editor here and here this is the actual node and this is sort of the comment here which I can delete I can select and delete it but before I delete it I want to read it any mesh geometry can be used as the base mesh for base mesh here for the cloud making com compound here feel free to drag and drop various geometries from the outliner that's the outliner and hook them up to the create cloud volume compound that's the create cloud volume Y compound well to see what they look like as clouds let's do this let's delete this create a torus which is a bit small let's make it bigger so it can <coughs> sorry about this uh, so it can um, compete with a cloud size and now we middle mouse drag that's the middle mouse button drag it into this uh, Bifrost graph editor and we need to output this into the input of the base mesh and that's basically all when we look at the scene now uh, Maya doesn't allow us to do this because it needs to think for a second okay and still navigation is a bit tricky so I have to it's lagging behind you're not alone I can't navigate in the scene currently because the graph editor of Biofrost has to think about the torus which is not a really complicated torus now uh, let's go back to the node editor here the torus feeds into the create volume and we want to change something about that volume here and when we select it we see here sort of an attribute editor of the graph editor in order to see that, that this cloud once was a torus we could for example reduce the detail size takes a while okay half an hour later uh, Maya didn't crash but it froze so there's no way to reproduce this error here it certainly was an error and doesn't have to do with uh, changing a parameter here I guess uh, so the detail size was 4 I reduced it to 1 then the system froze let's reduce it to 2 what's coming out of this this is much better now now the torus comes sort of into the sides 0 0.2 and it again freezes so we're back and we're still operating with this uh, node here create cloud volume and I'll tell you something about this uh, strange node anyway in just a few minutes and the d detail size was reduced to 2 then to 1 now it does work with 1 0 0.8 we're slowly getting there 0 0.5 And now the puff factor 0 0.1 and now we see the torus so we're letting it puff a little bit less this is the grid here in the middle we don't see it right now if you render it uh, as I said we need a light and we can create for example sky dome light which wraps around the whole scene and now we can render it Arnold needs to take some time to think about this strange object and then it comes out with quite a good rendering solution so it does take its time to render if you want to render it with the graphics card you go to 
the render settings, Arnold Renderer, and right next to Arnold Renderer is System, and you switch from CPU to GPU in beta, that is, and when you render it now, you will get a very nice white scene. The Bifrost extension module does not render in Arnold, at least this fluffy object here. This is what it does when it renders with a graphics card. Anyway, um, back to the nodes. Do you remember where to find them? Windows Bifrost Graph Editor. Now they're gone because we need to click here, Procedural Cloud, and they're, they're here. Now I thought, okay, for the next session I can just drag geometry in here like I did with the Polytorus and then create a cloud volume and then I see uh, how I can continue. So the way to create a new node is by pressing the key tab. It's the same as in other node editors in Maya, for example the Hypershade. So I press tab and then I have an input uh, area here. When I type in multiply, multiply, I have three options to use a multiply node here to multiply uh, values basically. That's a mathematical process. So I find multiply by typing M-U-L-T. But uh, when I type in cloud, I get no result. So I cannot produce this node by just pressing tab and selecting it there. It's not there. Why is that? Check out this icon, this icon, and these icons. They are different. And the reason they're different is because you can double click on them and a new window opens. Currently we have the procedural cloud window here in the Bifrost Graph Editor. When we double click here we get a new layout which is sort of inside this object here and don't be shocked this is what it looks like. And I don't want to get into it I just want to tell you that it goes further inside if you like. Initial volume double click it looks like this. The compute cloud size double click uh, looks like this. So um, and here you're always back uh, at the very beginning. So this is really well complex. So it's not that easy to reverse engineer this simple cloud setup with four nodes because it's actually dozens of nodes which you have to uh, put into account. Last thing I want to do is I want to exchange this torus with an animation of a character. And I don't know where I found it, but I did a tutorial about it. And um, just use any kind of character and animate it just a little bit. Uh, this is the dancer from the renderpeople.com here in Cologne. And it's free and we turn it into a cloud. So this is the dancer and let me render frames 500 and until 700 or something like that when he really gets into action. So from here sort of. I mean this can be rendered with a graphics card but not the cloud and this is the result. And when I play it back, you will see this thing sticking out from time to time. And I don't know where it comes from. Maybe you do know. And with this, I'll leave you alone. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.